Hello, all, and welcome to the Panorama Consulting Group ERP Vendor Spotlight. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're highlighting the NetSuite ERP application. My name is Chris DeVault, and I'm the Director of Industry Relations and Manager of Software Selection here at Panorama Consulting Group. Today, we have with us Stuart Tholen and Chris McCarthy from iBailey. iBailey representing the NetSuite application, and iBailey is a former NetSuite Partner of the Year and continues to be a leading channel partner for NetSuite. And we are offering a, an hour of free initial consultations for the first handful of respondents to today's webcast, so please take advantage of that. More detail here to come later. Today, we're going to look at some recent trends from both the Panorama side and the NetSuite iBailey side in the in manufacturing industry. Then we'll also have a brief overview of the NetSuite application itself. And a little bit about Panorama before we dig in. On the left-hand side, you can see the lines of service that we offer, full management consulting offerings, independent software selection always being one of the bread and butters of our service lines. In the middle, you can see the industries that we focus on, many across the board. And in the right-hand side, you can see the, uh, a little bit about a people, smart and experienced, well-educated uh, team members. Reaching across many different industries for Panorama exposes us to all sorts of standardized uh, processes and, and best practice offerings that we are able to uh, shed light across all of our uh, companies and gain, uh, each company is gaining benefits from those. We have a global outreach. We're serving many different industries such as manufacturing, government, healthcare, retail, agriculture. We work with a, a range of firms from startup groups all the way up to $20 billion plus organizations. And at Panorama, our projects include numerous ERP vendors, from tier one enterprise providers to tier two uh, small mid-market uh, applications, as well as niche applications for CRM, supply chain management, and, and workforce management. The intent today is to provide some exposure to what we're seeing in the industry, discover some information uh, about NetSuite themselves, and get an uh, overview of the application. We'll briefly go into the some of the trends that Panorama is seeing. Many of our clients are seeing uh, improvements in trying to digitize their supply chains using blockchain and other technologies for forecasting and collaboration. We see a lot of artificial intelligence coming into play along with the inter internet of things. We talk about connectivity, machine connectivity, and uh, predictive analytics able to kick off many different types of workflow within these systems. The customer experience, both from our vendors and uh, the clients we work with, both trying to enhance the customer experience from all aspects. And then best practices and standardization. A lot of our clients are able to adopt best practices and try to standardize across the board in order to fit out of the box processes from their ERP vendor. All right, now I'm going to turn it over to Stuart and the iBailey team to discuss more about NetSuite and iBailey themselves. Thank you very much, Chris. We appreciate the introduction. Today on this, uh, on this side of the presentation, we're going to have myself I'll talk a little bit about NetSuite, a little bit about iBailey, some of our processes in, in the manufacturing industry. And uh, Chris is a solution engineer, and he'll give you a, a kind of a dip your toe in the NetSuite uh, manufacturing and then let you take a look at that. We appreciate your time and interest in this presentation. We'll get underway. iBailey is a top 20 CPA firm. We've got about 85,000 clients, 2,400 employees. 44 offices, 15 states, about 400 million in revenue. The little uh, gold dots on the map represent our physical offices. So we're primarily physically located west of the Mississippi. We would do all the traditional things that you would expect a, C a top 20 CPA firm to do of ASC 606 consulting and, and cost seg studies and uh, forensics and valuations and uh, et cetera. And of course the tax and audit traditional compliance types of services. 
We also have a, of the 2,400 employees, about 2,200, or I'm sorry, 220 would be in our, in our technology consulting. The con technology consulting group would consist of a NetSuite practice of nearly 100 people. We would have a Salesforce practice. We would have a data analytics practice, work on some integrations, and just general, general consulting, IT consulting. That's a little bit about I Bailey. Our clients, our clients are all over the United States with a, a global presence. The NetSuite team, in the NetSuite team, we would do all things NetSuite related. Uh, the combined group has worked on probably 500 plus successful implementations. 55 of our consultants would be NetSuite, NetSuite certified. The 55 would be NetSuite consultants. We've got over 100 NetSuite certification and the group is a very experienced and mature group. As Chris said earlier, we've been an award-winning an award winning partner for NetSuite. We've won Partner of the Year four of the last five years and excited about those awards and, and, and grateful for receiving that, that uh, recognition. We would do all things NetSuite related and um, we would do the development and we would set up the analytics and and uh, advanced revenue recognition for companies in the manufacturing. Every every certification that NetSuite would possess, we would we would have those on our on our staff. Um, every group, every consulting group is going to have an implementation methodology, and they're going to be proud of it. But I'm going to say that ours is a mature implementation methodology. If you're a 15 person organization, you have one level of methodology and a methodology that works, but it may not be documented for future. And if that superhero employee leaves, maybe following up and having continuity for the client would be difficult. With nearly 100 people in our practice, we've matured the implementation methodology so that things are documented and that the processes are very well defined. And uh, it, it kind of spans from entry level implementation methodology to the, maybe how the big four Accenture would execute their methodologies. And, and I, I would say ours provides for a very successful implementation. And these represent the phases of initiate phase and a plan phase and an execute close. And then we very much like to be on site when the company goes live and we call that a nurture phase. In the Ide Bailey implementation approach, it's really a collaborative type of approach. We bring a project manager in, lead consultants and, and configuration consultants, and if needed, solution architects and developers and integration specialists. And uh, the client would bring their stakeholders and department heads and subject matter experts to bear. And together, collectively, we work together to create a unified team. And that team uh, is, is Flexible enough to make sure that they're going to have there's there's many things that are pre-planned, but they're flexible enough to make sure we address the needs of that specific client. One thing a more mature methodology would mandate is is project management. The project management keeps us on time, on budget, within scope, and our our project management folks are all certified, and they they run they run a project and it's an it's an incredible. An incredible experience to have all project, all the projects receive project management. I'm shifting a little bit now from I Bailey to Gartner, or I'm sorry, from I Bailey to NetSuite. So NetSuite, uh, when we were considering softwares to support, we decided we wanted to support the product that that seemed to be the most have the biggest market share and have the biggest investment going forward. According to Gartner, Gartner says NetSuite's the most successful ERP. It has the no, it has the, the largest market share and therefore probably the largest, largest investment continuing to go forward. And um, it was very important for us because we look at the marketplace and there's about 200 different small to medium size SMB ERP options for somebody to consider. And we want to pick the product that's going to be in business tomorrow and is going to be receive future investment. You look at what happens with uh, worksheets in Lotus and Excel and Quattro Pro and SuperCalc systems of years gone by, 
there's only a few that are going to survive. And so we think going with the systems that are going to survive is very important for our clients. NetSuite has six pillars of their focus. They, uh, they want to be in the software, and they are in the software industry. They want to be in the wholesale distribution and manufacturing and in, in the service sector and e-tail retail and in the enterprise sector. So those six columns represent the vertical industry, so to speak, that, that NetSuite thrives in. And now specifically manufacturing and, and uh, manufacturers have gone slower to the cloud than wholesale distributors and others in that industry. But we're seeing a high escalation of manufacturers being very interested in cloud functionality. This is a sample shot of some of the clients that are utilizing NetSuite's manufacturing system. NetSuite's a comprehensive ERP, probably the most comprehensive. It would have core accounting and purchasing and inventory and manufacturing, fulfillment, billing, projects, tracking, time and expense, payroll, revenue recognition, fixed assets. I don't believe there are there may be any competitor that would have the breadth and depth of this system in totality. There's a lot of good systems out there. And um but this one and its architecture, its design, and, and how it is uh, presented, I, I don't believe there's any application that has, that has the complete breadth and depth of what you would see in NetSuite. And not listed on this screen is also a CRM. There's a CRM that's embedded in the system. If you wanted, there's dashboards and budgeting and reporting. Everything under one roof, all one integrated system, all one source of truth. Some of the things that you could expect to receive according to industry research, actionable insights in your manufacturing, 56% increase in, in actionable insights. You could see an increase in gross margin, 1% to 5%, a reduction in inventory cost of 30%, an IT cost of 75%. One of the, the beauties of NetSuite is you've done your last upgrade. You're always on the current version. The publisher would take care of things like backup, security, upgrades. Twice a year, they, they put a new version together, and you obtain that with little to no effort on your part. IT cost, 75% reduction in IT cost. As NetSuite is uh, becoming more sophisticated in manufacturing, they have a stairway uh, presentation that says well, you can kind of cr crawl, walk, run. You may start out with uh, the beginning part, the label remediate, then expand, and then innovate, and enhance operations, and finally transform your operations. And you can see, uh, as you'll be provided this slide deck, the the numbers that support those those efforts. But our clients pick various areas in which they uh, would care to achieve in this stairway and we work together to make those accomplishments. Real-time actionable items. One thing beautiful about this uh, system is because it's completely web-based and it's a uh, browser agnostic, that when you get on it, um, you have dashboards, 360 degrees views, and it's, and it's user-based. So John, uh, on the shop floor, the, the operation plant manager, can measure and see what he wants to see. Mary Jane in sales can measure and see what they want to see. So as we log in in our particular role, we get to see what information we think is relevant and important to me. And from there, we can do our work and, and execute what we want to execute. In NetSuite, again, according to research, business visibility, 70 to 90 percent increase. Financial management, real time, real, real time and, and resource. Uh, 70 to 90 percent reduction. Close the book 75 to, to uh, 90 percent faster. Accounting stuff, accounting staff productivity, 30 to 50 percent more productive. Order processing efficiency, 45 to 75 percent improved efficiency in order processing. Production efficiency, 50 to 80 percent. Inventory carrying cost, 2 to 5 percent. Obsolete inventory carrying costs down 60 to 80 percent. IT re support resources 50 to 70 percent. 
business continuity, 35 to 55%. NetSuite, uh, again, not, this isn't what NetSuite says. This is what research says about NetSuite. With that, I'll turn the time over to Chris McCarthy and we can discuss, and he can give you a demo of what NetSuite manufacturing looks like today. All right, thank you, Stuart. So I am uh, Chris McCarthy. I'm a solution engineer with Ide Bailey, like Stuart had mentioned. And so I actually came from the implementation side of things, uh, working with wholesale distribution and manufacturing based companies, and then moved into the solutioning side of things as a solution principal and now a solutions engineer. So I'm going to take you through a tour here of NetSuite. And as you should be able to see, I am logged in as the administrator here in the top right hand corner. And as the administrator, I have a lot more access to functionality than a typical user would in any given organization. But as I navigate over this role here, I can see that I have other roles that I can assume as well. This gives you as a customer, the ability to really allow access to different areas of the system while still maintaining a really high level control. So for employees that wear a lot of different hats and need to be able to do a lot of different things uh, to be able to accomplish their tasks on a day-to-day -day basis, this gives you that ability uh, out of the box. So these roles come out of the box, pre-configured with dashboards, the sets of permissions, what they're able to do and see within the system. And so if I move into a production manager role here, we can see that along the top here, our ribbon will actually change based on this role. And that's because the sets of permission that makes up this role are going to drive what we're able to do and see in the system. And you can see this dashboard here that comes with our production manager role. So all the actionable insights that you would expect when you log in as a production manager and things you need to be able to see as soon as you log in uh, when you come into the office. So we can see here we've got uh, some reminders here in these little white windows called portlets. And these portlets can be moved around uh, according to any end user's preference, just simply drag and drop these different portlets wherever uh, you like as an end user. And the same goes for these reminders. So these reminders come out of the box, but you have the ability to establish your own sets of reminders to make sure that you're doing everything you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So scrolling down here a little bit, we have a navigation portlet here. So I can access different parts of the system quickly and easily. Here we can see I have the ability to mass create work orders. I can release work orders to the floor to start building out and producing these items. As far as transactions, I can issue components to work orders. I can build those work orders or assemblies. And again, a lot of different shortcuts really to be able to access these different parts of the system to make sure that everyone again has the ability to do their day-to-day -day job. So NetSuite puts a lot of focus on boosting productivity of users. And the idea of this dashboard is to be a place where they can do their day-to-day -day and any associated tasks can be initiated directly from this dashboard. So if we continue scrolling down here, we'll see some different KPIs and data points. And some things to point out here is the fact that you can drill down from your dashboard into the underlying transactions. So if we click on the orders key performance indicator here, that will take us to the orders by customer summary. And we'll be able to see all of these different transactions. And then again, if I take one more click here, drill down one more additional level, I'll be able to see the individual order that was making up that overarching amount that was on our dashboard. And so again, with three clicks, I was able to get from my dashboard all the way down to an underlying transaction to be able to see what exactly has happened with this order, where it is in the process. We can see the status here is that it's billed. Everything looks good according to this order. But again, we got here in three clicks, very easy to get very detailed into the system straight from your dashboard. Now, if we just navigate back here and continue along our dashboard, you can see we have some different graphs and things uh, to put our work center load, so really, uh, something to tell us what the expected work 
is for each of our different work centers on our shop floor. And we have the ability to actually exclude different work centers if we wanna see this data in just a different way. It's really easy to be able to do that. And I mentioned just dragging and dropping these portlets is very easy. And it's also easy to add additional portlets. So if we click this personalize button here, just takes a couple clicks to be able to add something like a KPI scorecard. Now we have that here on our dashboard. Now we just wanna set that up because we're a production manager, we wanna see manufacturing operations. Select save. And now you can see all these different KPIs and metrics related to manufacturing oper operations. So our sales, our inventory value and turnover, days on hand and our order fill rate, things that really just give you again as the end user really actionable insights into the organization. Scrolling down here a little bit more, we can see we have a couple of other reports here, such as work orders in process. So giving us uh, a really nice visual to understand where these orders are. So if this is for a customer, for example, we could actually look this up very quickly and be able to give them an update on the status of their work order. And you see if we hover over this, it'll actually pop up some information around the customer itself, just to give you uh, some additional insight and information into the customer. Okay, and then we also have a report here for released work orders, what has been put out onto the shop floor, and then you're able to filter this out by different start dates, work order number, if it's for a specific customer or a specific item. Now I mentioned you have the ability to drill down. We saw that with the sales order. Now let's take a look at what that looks like with a work order. So we can see that we are 50% complete with this specific work order for a customer. So we wanna make sure that everything is going according to plan for building out this work order. So let's take a look and view it. And now we can see our work order record. And straight from here, you'll notice a couple of things on the record itself. We have the ability to create an assembly build right from the work order here. We can close this work order. We can also print our bill of materials to issue out to the shop floor so that they know what they need to pull to build out the assemblies that'll make up this work order. We can see the assembly that we're building here, the quantity that we will build, how many have been built, the status, and the created from field. This is actually giving us traceability back into the sales order transaction that automatically generated this work order. So you can see there's uh, a lot of linkage between the different transactions within NetSuite so that you can easily get from one transaction to another. If we continue scrolling down here under the items, uh, sub tab here of this record, we can see some different things along the lines of the components that are making up this assembly item, exactly how much are going to be needed, this quantity field uh, for this entire work order, the unit of measure. And then we also have some information regarding how much inventory we have used, how much we have available, what's on hand. And we can see some discrepancies between what's available and what's on hand and meaning that we've committed inventory to other orders and it's not gonna be available for us to pull in to fulfill this work order. And if we scroll along the right here just a little bit more, we can see some other informations around how NetSuite automates some of the uh, transactions that are necessary to make sure that we can build this out. So we can see we have actually have a purchase order to actually order nine more of these uh, specific component items here. And if we need to, we can actually order more of this component item right here from the work order, just by clicking this hyperlink. And now that'll take us to a purchase order. And all we need to do here is select a vendor and then simply just save this purchase order. And now that's going to be linked back into that work order because we created it right from that record. And again, just gives you a lot of traceability into those uh, transactions as they're being processed. And if we scroll to the right here, what you're gonna notice is that purchase order number that was generated for this work order. So if you need to consume or you need to purchase, excuse me, a little bit more inventory and sh to ensure that you can build out and fulfill all of these work orders for your different customers, that's a, a very quick and easy way to have that done. Moving along the different subtabs here at the bottom, we have a concept of related records. So very similar to the created from 
field that we have at the header of this record, we also can see different records as it relates to any assembly builds, work order completions, issuances of material, et cetera. And now we can simply just pull that open in a new tab here. And now we can see the specifics around this assembly build, any inventory detail as it relates to if you're doing lot tracking or a serialized inventory, being able to assign those serial numbers into the assembly and then ultimately into the finished good as well. So again, very similar to our work order in terms of the information we're going to capture as it relates to all the different uh, component items and any specifics that need to be brought in for this manufacturing process. Now I'll exit out of this and come back and make a note of just uh, the system information subtab here. This is something that's very uh, unique to NetSuite in that it gives audit trails on each and every record within NetSuite. So if anyone's coming in, changing records, editing them, creating them, it'll have a full audit trail that is time and date stamped with who set you know, what value, what did they edit, what did they change and what did they change it to? There's a lot of uh, power here in terms of just auditability and traceability back to who was doing certain uh, activities as it pertains, uh, in this case, to this work order. And now here, what we can actually do is simply just create this build to close out the work order and simply just create a status if we need to and then designate a quantity so we need to create just one more of this inventory item here and now designate our or our bin excuse me and how many we need to pull from this bin and now give our inventory detail our serial or lot number and the quantity associated simply hit save now that assembly build will actually close out that work order and complete the work order for us. Okay, now we'll come to this work order. And what we're gonna see here is now we have built two of those specific uh, assemblies that we've designated here. And now if we want to go to our sales order and fulfill this sales order, we'll be able to do that now that we've actually built everything out here. And so that's uh, a quick tour of NetSuite for manufacturers. We focused a little bit on the usability and the navigation, moving around the system, the navigation tools with uh, drill down and being able to link records together, how you can leverage your dashboards to be personalized to you. Uh, went through some work orders, looked into some of the details we're receiving from the floor. And there's a lot more I didn't cover, so hopefully this gave a good overview of manufacturing in NetSuite. And at this point, I will turn it back over to Chris. All right, thanks, Chris. Appreciate the overview of NetSuite there. And thank you to you, Stuart, as well, for the overview of NetSuite and I Bailey. Again, to our attendees here, we're offering uh, free initial consultations, one free hour of consulting time uh, with some of our experts. So please take advantage of that, visiting our website and offering the code seen here. Just wanted to say thanks again to the Ide Bailey team and to all of our attendees. Um, wanted to take a couple of questions as they roll in. Wanted to uh, put Flor Laura Florence's information up. Laura is the Director of Business Development and feel free to reach out to her for any further contact uh, um, or through the website. Laura has been in the professional services uh, from the um, Panorama side and the client delivery and now leads our sales team. So great experienced uh, resource there. And uh, Stuart, a couple of questions here. If you could please explain the scalability and the entry points of an organization for NetSuite. Yes, yes, uh, thank you, Chris. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a great question and I would say we have some clients that go down as low as two million in revenue and some that go as high as a billion in revenue. But the majority of our clients would probably land somewhere between 20 million in revenue and 500 million in revenue and uh, would have some level of skill set 
to be able to utilize a system of this nature. Yeah, good, thanks. And then can you also explain some of the benefits NetSuite is realizing after the uh, uh, Oracle merger? Absolutely, Chris. So as a question we oftentimes get asked is, is it good or bad that Oracle owns NetSuite? And, and our experience to date in the years that they've owned NetSuite has been it's been a really a positive uh, experience. And I'm going to put four things down that I think are positive. One is continual investment. So there's been another source of, of funds to help get people, get resources, add functionality, scalability, and do all of those kinds of things. So the investment has been at a much greater level. The advanced functionality, uh, NetSuite, uh, Oracle is helping build a more mature product in, in manufacturing and frankly, uh, FP&A and other, other things that are related to financial planning and analysis. But Oracle has brought some expertise to bear and been able to consult with that. The uh, Oracle's philosophy is to be very autonomous or separate from NetSuite to be able to let NetSuite govern NetSuite. And that's been good. So they haven't changed their business model. They've only improved their business model. They haven't changed it to be adversely affected. Also, one other benefit may be the data centers. Oracle's input on the data centers and providing some more robust uh, data centers has been really, so performance is better and, and uh, we're seeing some positive impact there. All in all, the impact of Oracle on NetSuite, the model has not changed significantly. And they, uh, it, it, from my perspective, has been a very positive impact for NetSuite to have Oracle purchase them. Yeah, thank you, Stuart. And we're certainly seeing a benefit to both sides uh, with that transaction occurring, uh, both NetSuite and Oracle. So really appreciate uh, your time, Stuart, and thank you to the entire I Bailey team for making today happen. Uh, and again, thank you for all of our uh, attendees for joining us today.